so close to done. Like, oh man, this has been a project, to say the least. Like, gathering all this information, watching at least five to ten episodes per season a day on top of extra reviews. Like, it's just been chaotic. And it's probably not going to get any less chaotic in the summer with all the movies coming out, but... I've enjoyed looking at these seasons, mostly aside from the ones that are duds that I will talk about in another video. But... This is the start of yet another different era of Power Rangers, and after this, we only have Dino Fury and the seasonal ranking, which I'm doing as a tier list, because no one watched the one I'd made for the Pokemon movies, so I'm going to do it in a tier list format instead, because that seems to be the one that actually gets views, so. Yep, that will be the video that sums up all my thoughts on every season of this show, for those of you that don't want to rewatch every single one of these videos, because... Yeah, these videos are some of the most overly analytical stuff I've ever done on this channel. But at the same time, it's been a lot of fun, and I have enjoyed talking about the awesome seasons of this show. So with that, we've reached Beast Morphers. The first one to establish a few new rules. One, a continuous continuity between... Pretty much every season of Rangers, all being from like different dimensions and how it's all interconnected. Like, we got a little bit of that in Super Ninja Steel, but this is the one that really put the emphasis on it, with having the Morphin Grid being a power source for the, you know, the base of operations and stuff like that. So, what do I think of Beast Morphers? It's solid. It's good. But it is overrated to an absolutely obnoxious degree. So many people call this like the greatest season of all time or the season that finally put the Power Rangers back on the map where they belong or back on top or the peak Power Ranger season for fans. I'm sorry, I don't see it. I see a solid good season marred by some really, really stupid moments. Like, oy, we, we have a lot to talk about, so strap in, because this is not only the longest analytical section of this video you're going to ever get on any of these videos, period. Yes, even more than Dino Fury. But it's also because this is when Hasbro decided it was a good idea to, instead of having a normal season and a super season like Saban. Instead, they just make straight up two seasons per Ranger team. Or, in the new case of the Dino Fury Rangers, four seasons per Ranger team. Because Dino Fury and Cosmic Fury are both going to be the same team. Like, yeah, they're getting a little bit carried away with it. But I mean... I can kind of understand why they did that, though, because the super thing was starting to lose, you know, it was starting to lose its stride, not to mention Super Mega Lies kind of ruined the whole thing, so. I can understand why they just made straight up two seasons of the same team in the same season, but at the same time, it also makes it a lot more of a pain in the butt to sit through, like, that decision is an absolute mixed bag. So, let's start with our analyticals, shall we? First up, we have the main rangers. We have Devin the Red Ranger, played by Rory Travis. He's okay. There's Ravi the Blue Ranger, played by Jazz. I'm going to absolutely butcher this. Baduwalia? Baduwalia? I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. Um, he's also fine. Zoe the Yellow Ranger, played by Jacqueline... Siskowski? What is it with these people and their weird names? The Yellow Ranger. Um, she's also fine. Nate, the Gold Ranger, played by Abraham Rodriguez, is fine. 
And then there's Steel, voiced by Jamie Linehan, who's technically also a Beast Bot, but he's the only Beast Bot to become a Ranger, so he's up in the Ranger section instead of the Beast Bot section. He's fine. This Ranger team is fine. Not amazing, not awful, just fine. And then we have the three Ranger teams that are in the Great Connection crossover which is the Mighty Morphin Rangers, Jason, Zack, Billy, Trini, and, Kim and Kimberly. Even though Austin St. John is the only one to actually come back, the rest are played by stunt doubles. Yeah, that is something that's going to get repeated in that awful Netflix special, so not a fan of that. Well, aside from Zack and Billy, but you know what I mean. Then there's the Dino Thunder Rangers, Connor, Ethan, and Kira. Except... Again, Ethan and Kira are body doubles, and Connor is voiced by Dan Musgrove, who apparently also voiced him in a cameo in Dino Supercharge that I completely forgot to point out, so... Yeah. But, I can understand why James Navarro didn't want to come back. He's a dad, he's a businessman, he's, you know, he's busy. So, I can understand that, and that one I can accept. However, I don't know why they couldn't get Anna Lahana or Kevin Duany do any, do any, however you say it, to come back and just do a voiceover. Like, you could do that from your cell phone, guys. It only take you, like, five minutes. Come on. And then we have the Dino Charge Rangers, Tyler, Chase, Coda, Riley, Shelby, and Ivan. But the weird thing is, Tyler, Chase, Coda, and Ivan are the only ones that fully come back, while Riley and Shelby are just voiced. From what I heard, it was some kind of pay dispute behind the scenes. Yeah, sound familiar? Well, I'm just glad they came back at all. And it is cool to see all three teams fight side by side, even if a lot of it is deflated by the fact that they couldn't get everyone back together. That is a huge bummer. Then we have our supporting cast, which is also pretty long, so buckle up for this. First up, we have the B-Spots. I already mentioned... Steel, but then there's also Cruz, who's voiced by Kelson Henderson. Yes, again, Kelson Henderson back for, like, what, his 12th role in Power Rangers? Like, good grief. Then there's Smash, voiced by Charlie McDermott. Yep, he's also back again. And then the only newcomer is Jax, voiced by Emmett Skilton. Yeah. And then there's Grid Battle Force, which is led by Commander Shaw, played by... Tulia Blakely, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Then there's General Burke, played by Mark Wright. Blaze, played by Colby Strong. Roxy, played by Liana Ramirez. The original Red and Yellow Rangers, before, you know, the plot happens. Then there's Betty and Ben, played by Christina Ho and Cosme Flores. Cosme, I don't know how to pronounce half of this. And it's another failed bulk and skull imitation. I mean, it's not as bad as Victor and Monty because there's no fart jokes this time, but still, they just keep trying to replicate bulk and skull, and every time they do it, they fail. Like, just stop. Try, try something different, alright? And then there's the rest. There's Mayor Daniels, played by Kevin Copeland. There's Muriel, played by Sia Trokenheim. Mike, played by Billy McCall. No, it's not Mike from Samurai. It's a completely different Mike. And then there's Megan, played by Madeline Adams. There's a lot more, but the, the rest are just one episode. So, not worth pointing out. And then if that wasn't enough, we have the crossover characters. Returning from RPM is Dr. K, played by Olivia Tennant, and Colonel Truman, played by James Galen. Even though that one's kind of in a cameo, but whatever, it still counts. And then Dino Charge brings back Keeper, voiced by Richard Simpson once again. Yeah. Like I said, this is a very analytical season. There's so much to break down, so much to analyze and point out, so... Yeah, like I said, buckle up. This is going to be a very long video. Then we have the villains. Starting off with Venge I mean Evox, who's voiced by Andrew Lang. Cyber Blaze and Cyber Roxy. Pretty much evil avatars, while the real ones are in comas. That's the easiest way I can try to explain it. 
they they are played again by Colby Strong and Liana Ramirez. They're pretty fun villains, though. I'll give them that. They're fun. Then there's Scrozzle, voiced by Campbell Cooley. Fargoyle, voiced by Jamie Linehan. And the Tronics are the foot soldiers of the season. And my goodness, are they boring. It's just guys in purple suits, with little to no actual unique or memorable design to them. Like, the foot soldiers in this season suck. Plain and simple. And then we have Sledge's crew back again. Sledge, Poissandra, Snide, Wrench, Curio, and the Vivix all come back. And they're all voiced by the same people that voiced them in Dino Charge. So, yep, there's that. And then there's Mighty Morphin that sort of... <sighs> this is confusing. There's Goldar Maximus, voiced by Adrian Smith, who's... Okay, it's a cool little callback, and I love the episode they have right before Grew Connection, where they're trying to pick out what villain to resurrect, and they're going through Ranger history. Like, it's a really unique and fascinating way, not to mention a very creative way, to do, you know, the annual season clip show. So, yeah, give them credit for that. That's, that was actually pretty ingenious. And then there's Rijack, voiced by Kevin Keyes. He's not technically from Mighty Morphin, but he's one of the ones that actually, you know, convinces... Evox and the rest of the that whole crew to bring back Goldar, so yeah. And then the Putty Patrollers come back too, and what's nice is that it is still the original designs. It's not like Redux designs or anything like that. They don't try to update it, they keep it exactly the same as it should be. I will give them props for that, because most of the time with something like that, they try to update it. And sometimes when they do that, it is very distracting okay we're through the huge majority of it because now it's pretty much what you'd expect let's start with the weapons which has a very very clear bias towards the red ranger like he has not just one weapon to himself he has three weapons to himself and not to mention shares three other weapons with blue and yellow he has six individual weapons, and that's not even counting his battleizer. Like, why? Why is there such an obvious bias towards the Red Ranger? I understand it. Red Ranger's the leader. He's supposed to be the one that gets the most focus and attention. I understand that. But there's a difference between that and just being biased. And not to mention just being lazy, because seriously, the rest of the Rangers do kind of get a huge shaft compared to other seasons when it comes to weapons like come on come on Hasbro so for the three weapons that are exclusive to the Red Ranger there's the Cheetah Beast Blaster the Cheetah Claws and the Beast X Ultra Blaster and then yellow blue gold and silver all share the Beast X King Ultra Bow then there's the Beast X Ultra Cannon and the Beast X Spin Saber. And then shared between red, blue, and yellow is the Beast X Blaster, the Beast X Saber, and those combine to make the Beast X Cannon. And then gold and silver have a Strike Saber. And then if that wasn't enough, Red Ranger gets another weapon in favor of the legendary weapons that are reused from the season, which... There's one for each ranger, and they're all from different seasons of the show. So, for the Red Ranger, he gets to use the Super Ninja Steel Blaster. Then Blue Ranger gets the Delta Enforcer from SBD. Yellow gets the Thermo Blaster from Lightspeed Rescue. Gold gets the Dino Saber from Dino Charge, which is confusing because they see the Gold Ranger in that whatever. And then uh, Silver Ranger Steel gets the Cloud Hatchet from RPM. Yeah, they have a bunch of, like, morphers and legendary weapons in the grid battle force base in, like, a storage room. It's a cool little Easter egg, but at the same time, it also feels a bit lazy because it's like, you put those in there instead of designing specific weapons for yellow, blue, well, yellow and blue that don't get their own specific ranger weapon. Like, that's lazy. And then the Battleizer is Red Fury mode. It's fine. Then only one vehicle for the season with the X-Bike, which is shared by all 
five rangers. And then for the Zords, we have the Beast Deck Zords, Racer, Wheeler, and Chopper. Then the Striker Zords, Wrecker, and Jet. And then the rest slash Auxiliary slash Miscellaneous. Beast Deck King and a second Racer Zord for the Red Ranger. And then for the Megazords, we have the Beast X Megazord. That's the main one, which is a combination of blue, red, and yellow. Bit of a callback to Dino Thunder. Uh, it's fine. I don't even remember what it looks like. Hold on. I don't even remember what the darn thing looks like. I'm sorry. Give me a minute. Da, 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 da. How does this thing look? Remind me. Oh. It's that one. Uh convoluted and confusing and unlike ninja steel where I compare where I complained about the overuse of red this one has an overuse of blue like there's barely any hints of red on this megazord despite the fact that he is the leader and yellow just gets arms while blue gets the helmet the chest and the legs why? Not to mention, it's just so busy, so con- just no. Not a good Megazord design, just- just no. Not a good design, I'm sorry. It's too convoluted, it's too busy, and it's just too freaking confusing. Like, no thank you. That- no, bad Megazord. Moving on. And then, the Striker Megazord for Gold and Silver. And then the Beast X Ultra when those two are combined together. Then blue and yellow specifically get the Beast X King. And then all that combines together to make the Beast X King Ultra. And you know what's also weird? There's no ults in this season. That's the only five Megazords you get in the entire season. I get that this was Hasbro's first season and they were trying to find their footing, which is why I'm not being super harsh on them, but that's lazy. Like, the easiest way I can describe this is lazy. Because Red Ranger has like seven or eight weapons just to himself, and then Blue and Yellow get shafted, Gold and Silver have to share one, I just see so much budget cuts, so much lazy other alternatives, and sure it's cool to see legendary weapons again and they're done way better than they were in Super Mega Lies, absolutely, but still, it just feels like a lazy way out of giving Blue and Yellow their own Ranger specific weapons. Like, why? Is it just to make this season feel different? Well, there's more to a season than feeling different. You have to make it good, first of all. Just, uh, confuse me. What do you want, Discord? Shut the flip and flip up. Shut up. So yeah, that part just angers and frustrates me. And... That's the season itself. It has good ideas. It's overall solid, but goodness, it has some really bad problems. Like, another awful finale for the third time in a row. Like, uh. Dino Supercharge had a bad finale. Super Ninja Steel had a bad finale. And now Beast Morphers has a bad finale. Where we have a plot twist with Evox, which just feels stupid. And I'm going to shut this computer off because the constant beeping is annoying the absolute flippin' flip out of me. Yes, Grid Connection is a great episode. Yes, it's cool to see it all cross over. But this season just screams lazy way outs and budget cuts. Okay, what about the suits? Are they at least good? Yes, the suits are good. They are unique from everything else. Instead of being spandex, it's leather. 
and they tried to be more unique with the helmet design. And I will give them that. These the suits are cool. They are the suits are cool and the suits are unique. I will give them that. But some of the writing is clunky. A lot of it feels very long-winded and drawn out since it's two whole seasons with this team with little to no variation whatsoever. And so many episodes just drag and bore me. Like, I'm not going to remember any of these Rangers aside from one episode. One. And yes, it also tries to pay homage to all these other past Ranger seasons, but unlike the one part with Goldor, the rest of it feels either lazy, rushed out, half-efforted, or just outright forced. Like, this season just frustrates me. Like, I want to call it good. I want to call it amazing. Well, I am going to call it good, but just barely man this season has so many problems like watching it again just emphasizes that Hasbro was finding their footing and they had no clue what they were doing no clue and yes season two gets better but season one is still a clunky cluttered mess like if we were doing individual final verdicts like we did for Mighty Morphin Beast Morphin Season 1 would be a 6, and then Season 2 would be a 7. Because Season 1 is a clunky, cluttered mess. Like, it, it is almost as bad, if not even more bad, than Mighty Morphin Season 2. Like, it is a clunky, cluttered, clumsy, lazy mess. Like, Yes, this season is good overall, but that first season being so slow and so drawn out and so boring, it just really damages it in the long run. And yes, a lot of these problems are fixed when we get to Dino Fury, which is a straight-up great season, both of them. I'd probably give season one of that an eight, and then season two a nine. But Beast Morphers is... Clearly, Hasbro trying to find their footing. And while they get it by the end of Beast Morphers into Dino Fury, you still have to sit through a very mediocre first season. Like, people praise the ever-living daylights out of this season all the time on pretty much any sites whatsoever for being different, for being unique, for paying homage to the past without it coming off as cringy. But in my opinion, this season is rushed out, lazy, half-efforted, and has really good ideas and one great crossover arc and episode. But aside from that, it's just good and nothing more. Extremely unmemorable. The team is very unmemorable. Like, the characters here are unmemorable. And don't even get me started on that crap, crap plot twist in the finale. Like, just, no. That plot twist in the finale sucks. And like I said, it's the third time in a row that we have had a bad finale to a solid to good season. Why? It's just a season that frustrates me, and I will never understand those that say it's like a 9 or a 10 out of 10 season. One of the best, if not the best, in all this franchise. No. It's lazy, it's rushed out, and it clearly doesn't know what it's doing half the time. Beast Morphers is good and nothing more than that. And again, stop trying to remake Bulk and Skull. Because every time you do it, you fail. And it only gets worse and more distracting with every attempt, Hasbro and Neo Savon. Like, stop it. Stop trying to remake Bulk and Skull and just try something new for once, okay? 
Now, granted, they kind of do that in Dino Fury, but I'll get there when I get there. Right now, I'm focusing on this season. And this season is a solid but very frustrating and extremely overrated mess. Final verdict is a 6.5 out of 10. It is above average and just good. Thankfully, like I said, it improves drastically when we get to Dino Fury, which is the final season we're going to be looking at because Cosmic Fury is not out yet. And like I said in the video from yesterday with Super Ninja Steel, I will be reviewing Legend of the White Dragon. So, before you ask, or before you hound in my comment section for me to review it, here is me saying it right now. I'm going to review it and watch it when it comes out in September. Okay? Okay. <sighs> and I'm sorry of me saying... Well, I'm sorry of me being this harsh on this season angers you. But I can't lie to you about my thoughts. And only rewatching it now makes it worse. It's good and nothing more. I will never understand those that call it great. It has good things about it. It has one great crossover arc. And then after that, it's just monotonous. And then the ending almost, again, completely ruins it. So. I got nothing more to say. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you for a much more positive video later today with Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2.